Hey y'all, today we've got something unique to talk about, and that's the Moondrop keyboard. Now, when it comes to keyboards, I've got a lot of preferences. It really matters for me, but I don't really review keyboards all that often. I've maybe tried, I'd say 20 or 30 in the last few years, but this one brings some unique things to the table that I didn't really anticipate. Let's talk about it. This is NOISO, and this is the Moondrop keyboard review. Let's just start by discussing the overall typing experience with Moondrop keyboard, which is the most important part. The keys themselves sound nice, they're not too aggressive, and they're relatively quiet, save for the space bar, which tends to produce a more audible sound. The keys feel tactile with an okay amount of resistance. Not, not really that much, but they have this satisfying feel while typing, so if you are like me and you tend to bottom out with all your keys, this is a good keystroke. Now, on to the layout. I thought I would hate it, but surprisingly, I don't so far. Now, my typical keyboard is full size rather than a partial size like this, but with the absence, outside of the absence of a couple keys, then I actually found using this wasn't bad at all. The particular loss for me is the absence of a right control button, but the arrow keys are conveniently placed, and even the shortened uh, shift key on the right, I didn't really find I was accidentally swapping my finger over too much over to the arrow keys, instead kind of using the anchor as the shift key pretty well. Now, at times, I can say that when I used the question mark key used from the shift key, I found that it was a little bit awkward, because typically I will hit the shift key with my pinky over here, and then press the question mark key with my middle finger or my pointer finger, which I wasn't able to do so because I couldn't shift that far over. I totally expected to despise not having the full-size keyboard, especially when working in applications like Excel that require quick no number inputs, but I really didn't find that to be as big of a problem as I anticipated. The layout worked surprisingly well for most tasks. That being said, there were a few instances where I missed the location of the page up, page down, delete, and, and delete keys because the delete key isn't in the top right corner and the page up and page down keys are along the edges of the device rather than somewhere else like they are on larger keyboards. Now, moving on to the connectivity features, this Moondrop offers dedicated two dedicated USB pass-through ports, which can be quite handy. Having these ports as accessible on the keyboard saves the hassle of having to reach for a separate USB hub or struggling with limited port availability on your computer. Lastly, I want to touch on a unanticipated aspect in audio performance. Now, I won't claim to be an audiophile, but I did pl plug this keyboard yes, there is an option, into a good pair of open back headphones, and the sound experience was just honestly incredible. There is a built-in DAC in this and a built-in headphone amplifier that both sound so good. It managed to deliver like very impressive audio quality, which was a pleasant surprise. I did find this a bit uh, surprising though, that audio audio files don't have dedicated track controls on the keyboard. That seems like an obvious miss. Like, on every other keyboard that I've used, there's ded dedicated audio controls either in the function keys with de or dedicated buttons elsewhere, and there's no option here, which is kind of weird for a keyboard that seems to be focused for audio. This is a very tall keyboard, and it has a pretty steep incline, not too dissimilar from, like, a typewriter. Hmm. But it's... <sighs> It's something that you really need to get used to. I think for most people, if they're kind of just sitting down in front of their keyboard, they will get used to it. But for me, when I was standing at my standing desk, which doesn't rise very high, my hands were going downwards, or my arms were going downwards, my hands had to come up in order to account for the slope in the keyboard, which was a bit disappointing. I would have preferred having this to be relatively flat. But in that, there's, of course, some additional features with the with the additional size and this thing is so heavy like you aren't sliding this around your desk you have to pick it up and move it into place which i thought would be nice so then i don't accidentally slide my keyboard around while i'm using it but it can be a little bit frustrating to have to pick it up and put it in the right place and then not be able to just quickly shift it with you know nudging it on either side it is dense very dense 
As a bottom line, while the Moondrop keyboard has some drawbacks, such as the lack of the right control button and the forced incline, it also brings some noteworthy features and pleasant surprises. It's a keyboard that would cater well to specific, specific preferences and needs, but it's important to consider these trade-offs. Ultimately, the Moondrop keyboard offers a unique kind of approach to keyboards that I think will appeal to some people, but it's really not the keyboard for me. Instead, I would prefer the Logitech keyboard that I use every day, which I'll give you a side-by-side. -side. There it is. Very different. These two things are, are very different, but I actually really enjoyed using this. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this quick video. If you want me to review more keyboards, I've got a couple ideas coming up, so be sure to let me know down in the comments, and let me know if you want me to check out anything in specific. I will catch you in the next one. See ya.